Thank you, Brother Moore. Good morning, people. I was certainly happy to be here this morning again, and I wouldn't have missed this for anything, hearing the prophecy of our sister, having the privilege of meeting Brother Kids in, you know, last night again, an old associate, one of my first uh, associates in the Pentecostal Rams. He was the one who brought me here to Shreveport the first time, I believe it was, Brother Kitson, years ago, and I had services at the, the old tabernacle. I believe that's when Brother Moore's mother was healed during that time, and I have stomach trouble, and many things the Lord did. <clears throat> you see, the same message is still going on. We don't bother that prescription. We just leave it just the way it is, and take it the way it's dosed out to us. <laughs> I appreciate this Irish brother. Certainly we got good Irishmen. <laughs> Saying the, there is a bomb in Gilead. Just perfectly blending in with last night. This fine little choir, David and Brother and Sister Moore, Anna Jean and all of them. Oh my, it's such a wonderful thing to be here in fellowship with you people again. Standing in the room a few moments ago, a long distance came in from a man... It was a minister somewhere that doctors would give him up and didn't know what was the matter with him. He got to the phone and he called and somehow or another through the office at home they got him, you know we'd been to Tabernacle at this time. And right while we were in there, Brother Kids and I and Brother Moore and some other brother, and I didn't know who it was standing there, but he wanted to know what was his outcome before the Lord, was he going to die? And the Holy Spirit in the building there, just in the office a few moments ago, revealed back to the man about him and all about him and what he was, how he was dressed standing there and what was the matter with him, and pronounced him healed. <laughs> he liked to tore the phone off the hook. <laughs> how the Lord healed him. Oh, aren't we happy that we still have the Lord God who still knows the end from the beginning. And it's good that... Uh, there is a bomb in Gilead, and there's plenty of it. There's doctors there, and what more the Lord has provided for us. So why should we go to anything else when God has so richly provided every joy that we have need of and every blessing that we need is in the household of faith with the children of God? Why should we refer or refrain from this and go to smoking for joy, drinking for joy, those things that only bring death? That's our joy is the Lord. So I'm so happy to be enjoying that. Now, um, what time do you dismiss your service? 11.30? Oh, that's... Uh, you couldn't put up with me that long. So, uh, so happy to see this group out here. And I won't be long. Now, tonight, at 6 o'clock, the boys will be giving prayer cards. And we're going to have the regular prayer line. I'll be speaking tonight, the Lord willing on something along divine healing or something like that because we're going to uh, dedicate this service tonight for divine healing. Billy and I were sitting in the restaurant this morning eating and we were noticing and he said, Daddy, can you tell Christians when you just meet them anywhere? I said, sure. He said, you see that man and his wife coming in there? I said, they're Christians. I said, yeah. In just a few minutes, someone else to come in. He said, uh-uh. I said, that's right. So in a few minutes, someone else come in. I said, how about that? And he said, that's right. <laughs> you can always tell a Christian. Many, of course, are women not with manicure or what that stuff is they wear. Not wearing that. But, I mean, you can tell it otherwise. See? They're, they're just marked. And a Christian has an atmosphere. Because though he is a son and daughter of God, he is a creator Ever who that little fellow was teaching Sunday school here this morning? I sure appreciate that message. He was uh, all right. I like it. You're the brother? All right, here. Well, that's fine. You was formerly must have been a Baptist because I could tell what he was talking. <laughs> that you, we had kind of fussed a little mark back there, but we outlive it, you see. <laughs> so, how bad is brother? And we just guy one at each other. But I could... When he said... The expression he made, I jotted it down on a piece of paper. I'll pick it up out of the office there. Two omnipotents met. That's true. When God and a believer meets these two omnipotents, because God, a man is a part of God, he's a son of God. See? And what little he is joins with the entire body. Jesus said over Mark eleven twenty two, 22, 
If you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you have said, you can, it will come to pass. See, believe that what you said. And a Christian is so marked that around him is an atmosphere. Did you ever meet people that you just love to be with? You've had that. And uh, why well, they create that atmosphere by their, their life, the way they live and the things they think about and the love they have for you. You've heard my message on the, the possum, you know, and on the bees trying to stay me, the bull trying to kill me, animals. See, if it'll do, it, you create an atmosphere. And that's the atmosphere you have to be in to pray for the sick. See, it's the same thing. It's love that casts out evil spirits. I won't call the name. It's one of the converts to the Lord that I led. It's an infidel. And he's coming down the Hurricane Highway on a truck line and and he seen my name up there and he said, that's fanaticism. So he just dropped and is up in Canada, way up near Dawson Creek. That night, it was so cold, you Louisiana people would have died up there because I was about to freeze to death and I got all the air conditioners on everywhere. Now I'm trying to keep, to keep cool this hot weather here. And, <clears throat> sir? You like it? All right. So um, we went in, he went in there and that night, Indians and everything. So he's seen the discernment of the Lord, not knowing the scripture. He goes back out and gets an old Indian up on the, an old trapper, brought him in and we couldn't give our prayer cards. So he just had to push him on the platform as he couldn't. Finally, he got this old Indian up there. He was going to, he knew this old Indian. He said, that man's got people following him. He, he speaks out like that. So he uh, set this old Indian up on the platform. As soon as he came up there, the Holy Spirit told him who he was said, and you live at a certain place, and you're a trapper. You've got five children, three of them boys and two girls. Said, one of them sitting back there studying to be a minister. Said, you're suffering with TB. Right. And said, the man that brought just this little fellow sitting here by a certain, certain name. <laughs> said, he's suspicious. That done it. <laughs> he became a servant of the Lord. Not long ago, we were going together across the country, and he said to me, he said, Brother Bram, you know, my wife don't believe in this. And said, every night when I go to church, she come home and says, oh, she just starts bawling me out when he hit the door and said, I get her by the hand, she's little, and hold her, and I try to cast that devil out as hard as I can. <laughs> but, <laughs> remind me of your message this morning, sir. So I tried to cast that devil out, and I said, devil, you come out of my wife. Devil, you come out of my wife. Honey, you're possessed with the devil. Come out of there, devil. <laughs> oh, I said, that's fine, Brother Fandler, but you, uh, you go at it the wrong way. <laughs> And he said, well, how do you do it? I said, when you come home, buy her a box of candy. Give it to her when you come in the door, put your arms around her. I said, that's why you guys out of devil. <laughs> <laughs> Love casts out fear, doesn't it? <laughs> Love, friends, the whole world is dying for love. That's one of the great things that we leave out of our Pentecostal blessing, too much of it, is love that mixes it together, the martyr that makes gifts and all the things of God operate perfectly, is love, one for the other. This will all men know that you're my disciples. Let us, before we approach his word now, bow our heads just a moment. Almighty and all omnipotent God, we thank thee this morning above all things for Jesus thy Son. And for his love to us, that when we were yet sinners, he died in our stead, reconciling us back to the fellowship, back to sonship, through his blood. And we pray this morning that the going forth of the word will catch every heart. My heart too, Lord. Prepare us for the coming of the Lord as this little lady has just prophesied that he's done left his throne on his way. We truly believe that, Lord. And Rebecca watering the camel that would take her to meet her lover. Yet she had never seen him, but it was love at the first sight. We thank thee, Lord. We believe that we, when we see him, it'll be love when we know that he was the one who died and redeemed us. Then in that great field somewhere between here and glory, when we crown him King of King and Lord of Lords and Angels stand with bowed heads, not knowing what we're doing. They never was lost like we were. And when we sing the songs that he redeemed us, what a glorious time that'll be. 
We're looking forward for that time. May our hearts be prepared. Sanctify the word that will be read and may it become spirit in life to us that we might correct our lives and live for him who died for us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me for just a a few moments. I want to read a little scripture here to see if I can draw from it some context for the next 15 to 20 minutes. And I us turn to Matthew, the 19th chapter, as we read. <clears throat> and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. And the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife? And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more they are no more twain but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Now, I want to take a little subject this morning, or, or text if we should call it that. Or the text, it wasn't so from the beginning. Now, Jesus, when he came to the earth here to make his earthly visit, for the purpose of redeeming that which God had foreordained. He uh, found teachers in those days teaching things that wasn't truth. I wonder if he wouldn't find some of the same things going on today if he come. Things that wasn't truth. And he told them, and the reason that I have chosen this certain text, it wasn't so from the beginning because we'll have to go back to the beginning to find out what the real truth of it is. Everything that we have on earth today is nothing new. It started in Genesis. Genesis is the seed chapter. Therefore, when God once does anything or makes a decision, as I've often quoted, that he always has to stay with his decision. How that ought to enlighten our faith. See, when God says something, all heavens and earth will pass away, but that cannot pass away. Therefore, it should give us character. It should give us faith to take that word which he has said and with all of our life hold on to it. Because he cannot change it. It's true. Now, God in the beginning, he made all things. He made it in form of seed first. It was a seed. And he said in Genesis 1, let every seed produce after its kind. And I just wonder as man always tries to pervert what God has did because man in his fallen state thinks that he can do something better than his creator did it at the beginning. He's always trying to turn something that God did around and make it something that it isn't. I was speaking on that just recently on a sermon of hybrid religion. And science, in working in the field of science, those who claim evolution has taken their own uh, scientific reproof and uh, proof and disproved their own theory of evolution. Because anything that is hybrid cannot breed itself back again. 
Therefore, if he made a certain seed, it has to remain that if you cross it up with something else, it cannot breed itself back. That ends it as soon as you, as you breed it. A mule. A mule can never produce another mule. Don't nobody ever lay it on to God of making a mule. He never done it. That's what man done. It's, it's a, reminds me of right smart today of the nature. When you hybrid anything, you spoil its nature. When you take a horse that's a good pedigreed horse, that horse has character about it. It's gentle. You'll hold his head up and you can call him. You'll put his head over your shoulder and nicker and, and you can make him, put him in the show and he's almost like a human. He, he's got high characters and something about him that's real. you never seen a mule do that. He's just, he's just a work animal. He's, he's all in works and no grace. <laughs> It reminds me of a lot of people today. You, they're all doing works, and that's about it. As uh, Brother Jack was saying this morning about the churches, that it has the structure, but not the. It's like the you got a good engine, but no steam in it. Uh, you got a dynamo, but it isn't running. The main thing is the steam in the engine. That's what the church needs. It's got the structure. You take a mule. He, he's, he's the dumbest thing in the world because he's hybrid. And you can call a mule and he'll just stand there and throw those big ears out and look at you. You know, I, I hope this doesn't sound sacrilegious. But it reminds me of too many people today has got new religion. A hybrid religion. Our church, we know all about it. And you can tell them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and give them the farmers of God and they just stand with their ears out. <laughs> Never make a move. A good hybrid brings forth... It, my sheep hear my voice. They know what's true because they like sheep food. A hybrid seed, like corn. You see, it looks beautiful because it's a hybrid. I've seen on a sign the other day Hybrid corn. Well, it's no good. Do you know what it's doing? Hybrid cattle makes a better cow. Hybrid chickens. They got chickens so hybrid now till a chicken ain't got no legs or wings. It's all breast. But the poor thing can only live a year and it dies. It's practically dead when it's born. So people's got to eat in that and now on those cells it's hybrid Science Reader's Digest wrote an article on it recently that in 20 years from now, if that keeps up, the human race will cease. Women and men are being perverted. Women are getting wilder shoulders and narrow hips. Men are getting narrow shoulders and wider hips. The woman will not be able to have her child. Eating a cell that's perverted. Chickens. And these chickens that you eat is so is so mushy and soft the texture in them that people don't want them anymore. Why, you're, they're killing themselves with their own ideas. Trying to pervert. We were made to eat these cells of uh, things just the way God put them. And there is also a hybrid church. It's prettier today than it used to be. Got better members, the Pentecostal church. They got finer buildings, finer pews, better scholar preachers, and so forth, but they've hybrid it. Let's go back to the real first life, the old Pentecostal blessing and the power of the Holy Ghost back in the church. They put it all on the preacher today. It ain't the preacher. The Holy Ghost is just as much to the laity as it is to the preacher. He ain't got all the religion. They got it out there. Now, I'm one today that believes that we ought to get the Spirit of God back in the church where we can have the gifts of the Spirit operating with unction and power. But today we find men 
were in the beginning in the church ages that I'm teaching on next week at my tabernacle at home to write a little commentary as my own comments on it. You notice it started a deeds of the Nicolaitans. After a while it become a doctrine. Well, what it is, they've taken all the spirit away from the congregation, made bishops, overseers, popes, put it all in the pulpit, and the pulpit got intellectual. There you got a hybrid church again, see, under intellectuals. God sent us back to the Holy Ghost amongst the people. Let the unction of the Spirit move among the people. Giving forth messages and power and manifestations. If we have to stand on the street corner or get in a chicken house or a barn somewhere, we don't want any of this hybrid religion. Coming out of a seminary, we want to come like a rushing mighty wind from our high that fills all the house, not just one man, all the house where they are seated together. Perversion. That's what man did in the days of our Lord Jesus. That's what he's trying to do today. Take the things that's original and pervert them by his own ideas and he ruins himself. I like to ask the evolutionists this. If you cannot breed back hybrid corn, how can they ever teach evolution? God said, let every seed bring forth of its kind. Every seed of its kind. And if you cross that seed up, it settles it. It cannot go farther. It goes right back to its original again. I'm so glad that I believe that God planted a Holy Ghost seed on the day of Pentecost that hybrided into denominations, but after a while, it's going back to its original again. Back to the real Holy Ghost. Back to the gospel message. Back to Acts 2 again. Back to the formula. Back to where it began at. There will rise a man one of these days that will be against these things and blast it as hard as he can. Notice. Now, to the original, go back to the beginning. Jesus told them, go back to the beginning to find out. It wasn't so at the beginning. While well, people say, I'm Presbyterian, I'm Methodist, I'm Baptist, I'm this, I'm that. That's all right, but let's go back to the beginning and see where it started from. See what it was at the beginning. That's the way God set His church up on the day of Pentecost. That's the way it's to forever remain that way. If you cross anything else up into it, denominations and all these other things and sprinkling and all these forms and things, you hybrid it. You get a better looking church, but it ain't got no life in it. It can't reproduce itself again. The revival that come forth in the days of Luther, it cannot reproduce itself because they hybrid it. The days of Wesley, they cannot reproduce it. Tell me one of them ever raised when they fell. When they hybrid the church, it goes right back again. It's done. It can't reproduce itself. It can bring members in, make an organization, but it can't reproduce itself again. What we want is something to reproduce, to bring sons and daughters to God. You can't do it from a seminary. It's got to come from the Holy Ghost above like a rushing mighty wind, like it did at the beginning. Hybrid religions, perverting things, changing things, man perverting. And when Jesus came in his days, he said, In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. What have they did? They've taken the commandments of God and hybrid it to their own ideas. And it brought it back and it said, Thou shalt not and thou shalt this and so forth. But they with their traditions makes the commandments of God of non effect. Because they had hybrid it. People wonder today how these things take place. How can a person stand and look out across an audience and draw a man or a woman and reveal the sins and things of the church? What's the matter? Why is all the church is doing it? They're hybrid. So right. There's only one church. And that is not a denomination. You can't denominate God's church. There's one church in one body. That body is the mystical body of Jesus Christ, here on earth. And by one spirit, we are all baptized into that one body. Whether we are Methodist, Baptist, or Catholic, or what. No matter what a man's denomination is, if he's depending on his church for salvation, he's lost. If a Catholic's depending on the Catholic church saving him, he's lost. If a Baptist is depending on the Baptist church saving him, he's lost. 
If a Pentecostal is depending on the Pentecostal church saving him, he's lost. But if those individuals are relying on God and on Jesus Christ by faith, are you saved and that not of works but of grace? Jesus found teachers in his days also perverting things. And he told them that in the, in the beginning we find the same thing today. They say, oh yes, the Bible does say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, but we don't believe he still performs miracles. We believe that Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do also, but uh, we, uh, we believe that those things cease with the apostles. See what you're doing? You're hybriding it. You're perverting it. Saying something that God did not say. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. I believe that to be the truth. I don't believe we should mess with that a bit. Just say it, Sandy. You haven't got faith to go on with it. Don't stop somebody else that does have faith to go. I've always said I wish I had faith to walk like Enoch home with God without death. But if I haven't got that kind of faith, I certainly don't want to stand in somebody's way that does have that faith to walk. I'll let him walk on. Sure, and I'll pray that God will give me grace and power to walk on. Sure. Jesus founded the church when he came, trusting the church for salvation. That's the same thing he, he does today when he's come in the form of the Holy Ghost in his last days. He finds the people trusting the church for salvation. What did the people get in the days of Jesus when they come trusting the church for salvation? They got a bunch of creeds. Man-made dogma. Perverting the word of God back to a creed. That's the same thing we got today. When the Holy Spirit's here, the person of the Holy Spirit, hunting out, searching out the bride of Christ, what do we get? What does he find? People accepting creeds for salvation instead of going back to the original for it. You got a, a prayer book or some kind of a textbook of some sort that we so and so believe this so and so. Why do you take a textbook for it? God's Bible is a textbook. Go back to the beginning. You adopt a handshake instead of the baptism. You adopt sprinkling instead of water baptism. You adopt farms and creeds and so forth instead of taking the farmer the way God wrote it. That's the reason we got a dead hybrid church today. Because it can't produce any more. A Lutheran can make a Lutheran. A Baptist can make a Baptist. A Presbyterian can make a Presbyterian. But God makes the saints when he comes in. The original Holy Ghost, Pentecostal blessing. They were expecting uh, the church to give them salvation. Then they find out they didn't even know the very root of their salvation when he come. Because they were hybrid. They looked at him like a bunch of mules. Huh, who are you? Illegitimate barn. Like an old braying donkey somewhere, you know. Out there, days of miracles have passed. Moses done so and so, but who's this guy? He don't belong to any of our organizations. Oh, he's telepathy. That's all. He's bills above the devil. That same thing has happened again. They don't know Christ in the power of his resurrection. They know him by a creed, but not in the power of his resurrection. Christ lives in the person. And if we come today and we hear people say the things they do, Jesus would simply say, it wasn't so from the beginning. Well, he'd say, Lord, I was sprinkled in the holy so-and-so church. He'd say, it wasn't so from the beginning. Well, I shook hands with the preacher and made a profession. It wasn't so at the beginning. They waited at the beginning until the power come from on high, a rushing mighty wind that changed the whole course of their life and set them afire with something. That evangelize the world. How can we do it through reading, writing, and arithmetic? Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Not teach reading, writing, and arithmetic. Preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is power and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. Follow the next words. And these signs shall follow them that believe. How are you going to teach a man to speak in tongues? How are you going to teach a man to cast out devils with power? How are you going to teach a man to do these signs that Jesus said he would do? How are you going to teach a man to be able to stand on the platform and, or somewhere and foretell things that's coming and things that has been and will be? How are you going to teach him? You can't. It's a gift of God. When we get away from that, we get into a hybrid condition. We're back. We just go back to the beginning. 
ever see. I wonder. I'd like for science to answer this one. If there is such a thing as evolution and they claim it could come some other way, why don't something rise higher than a man? We have no species higher than a man because he's in the image of God. Nothing can go beyond his creator. I'd like for them to answer that one. They can't do it. Why? It's the highest species. Why can't we produce something in our ethics and education and our great seminaries that'll beat what they had at Pentecost? You can't do it because that's God's way of doing it. Nothing will ever come forth that'll, that'll thrill the heart of people, that'll produce these signs. You'll never educate the people into it. You'll never be able to teach them into it. They've got to be born into it. So our denominations is hybrid. We need the Holy Ghost, the mystical body of Christ being formed on earth. That's the way it was at the beginning. It breeds itself back. It comes right back to the beginning. And all these years of denominations, finally, God has bred His church back to the Holy Ghost again. I'm so glad to be in it. Let the old seeds and carnality die out. Become a new creature in Christ Jesus. We're sitting together today in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit breathing out. Oh, I'm so glad of that. Breathing out doubts. Breathing out isms. Breathing in Himself, sons of God. Not breathing back mules, crossing it up. But breathing sons and daughters of God. That don't look at the Word and stick out their ears and say, Well, my mother was Presbyterian. That's all right. But we need birth to make us sons and daughters of God. Breathing out the unbelief and the creeds and things and bringing us back to the original sons of God by the Holy Ghost. Exactly. That's what the church is in the process of doing today. Then people today are as past. They hybrid the church to organization, to creeds, and mix up people's minds. And then they say, where is God? Where is the God of the Old Testament? Where is the Lord Jesus that promised these things? That's what Billy Graham was confronted with not long ago. By a Mohammedan. Where is this God that you speak of? He said he healed the sick. I'll take 30 and you take 30 and see what we can do about it. Oh, what we need today is man. Yeah! Feel with the Holy Ghost to call his hand on it. That's right. God's still the God that was with Elijah on Mount Carmel. He's still the same God today. We need a bread in Holy Ghost religion. A Holy Ghost power. Where is God? God is in His church. God is in His Word. God is in His people. God is in His universe. He's everywhere. But we can't hybrid Him into something because He won't cross up with nothing. He's God and God alone. You can't breed Him in five or six different things and, and uh, four or five different gods. He's God and God alone. He won't hybrid. He's God. Can't make intercession of saints and say this saint did this and that saint did that. No such a thing. There's one mediator between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. The only mediator. What's the matter with the church then? If he was your own earth, which he is. And we find the church today in the same condition he did. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. He said it wasn't so from the beginning. Now we find out what it was at the beginning. It reminds me of one day when... The, uh, Joseph and Mary had been up to the feast and they had started on the road back and they went three days journey and they missed the Lord Jesus. They didn't know where he was. Now three days without knowing where he's at. And come to find out they begin to search for him. The church has gone almost 2,000 years and don't know where he's at. Talking about there three days. Oh, they just said Perhaps he's amongst our kin folks out there somewhere. That's what the church has been thinking. Oh, he's around somewhere. If he ain't with us Baptists, he will be at the Methodists. And he, oh, he's around somewhere. He's with some of our kindred. You know, way back out of our, our Methodist forefathers had and our Lutheran forefathers. Don't just take it lightly like that. Let's find him. Where is the God of the Bible? Where is the God that made these promises? Who is he? What's his name? Why can't we do the same things that they did back there if they promised it? Why is it the same? Not long ago, I was hunting squirrels. I trained my rifle at 50 yards. If I can't shoot the squirrel's eye, I'll leave him alone. If I'm 30 yards at him, I back off to 50. Be sure that I get him. 
And my rifle got out and I sent it back to Winchester Company. Little cheap rifle. They sent me word back, said, Reverend Branham, this rifle will, will group, an uh, inch group at 25 yards. And a Model 75 Winchester, that's all you'll ever get out of it. I know better than that. I've been down on the official range at 50 yards, drove eight carpet tacks with it straight. And I know they were wrong. See? And there I was, I'd done everything, loosen the screws and tighten them across a 5,000th vibration here, throw it out an inch out under 50 yards. And I'd glass bedded it and floated the barrel and done everything I know to do. And uh, I know in the same rifle, Gene Gold sitting here, my friend, knows the other day I put eight, nine tacks, nine bullets in the same hole. That just... But the company that made it said the thing, the thing will only shoot a group, that's a group, you know, of shots around an inch at 25 yards, and this is driving tacks at 50 yards. I was sitting up under the tree, and there was Brother Woods and the rest of them up there banging at squirrels, hit him anywhere they wanted to, back, front, anywhere, didn't make any so they hit the squirrel. Having a big time, and I was sitting under a tree. I started crying, and I said, Lord, why did you make me a little nervous rat? Why did you make me like this? Why can't I go out there and enjoy hunting like they do and have to have that gun in a super condition? I waited there for about a half hour and laid down on my face and began to cry. The Holy Spirit come to me and said, I made you that way for a purpose. That's for a purpose. When one says one thing and hit loosely like that, you can't stand it unless it's zeroing. It has to be on the dot or it's not right. I said, I see, Lord. See? Just church denomination don't satisfy me. If the scripture says one thing and the church teaches another, that don't work. If Jesus Christ lived in the apostles and done the signs that he was here on earth, it'll do it again if we'll get zeroed in. We've got to get zeroed in. I don't care what the church says, it'll group this or that, and oh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and all this other kind of stuff, and all these creeds and things, one way or the other, it's all right. It ain't all right with me. If the apostles hit the dot, we can hit the dot too, if we'll get zero with God's Word. Let our experience zero with His Word. They did it. If they did it, why can't we do it? If we'll zero in, we'll do the same thing. Oh, the church says, as long as just hit, as long as you join church, shake hands with a pastor and put your name on the book and say this creed, this Apostles' Creed. So what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. The Holy Spirit zeroes you in to God's Word. Jesus, they expect Him to be with His kindred. That's the way we've expected. Oh, he's with, He was with Martin Luther. He was with John Wesley, John Smith, Calvin, Alexander Campbell, or some of them. He was with them. That won't work, is he with us? So they started looking around one day. You know where they found him? Not with their kindred, not with their organization, not with their denomination, with those that they expected him to be. That's what we've been doing. We've been trying to have a revival. Billy Graham has crossed the country, Jack Shooter, all many others. Trying to have a revival. Why are they doing it up on intellectuals? Bringing all the Baptists together, all the Methodists together, Presbyterians together. Putting them together, bringing their organizations, making the leaders, giving them talks and spare them up and so forth like that to shake hands and be all right. That's, that's good. Like the colored man eating watermelon. He just slides up and says, how was that, boy? Says, that's good, but some more of it. That's the way it is today. To get together and shake hands is fine, but there's some more of it. Amen. Hey, man. There's more of it than that. No matter how much intellectuals we get together and how we do, the life isn't there. We've got to go back where we left Christ. Martha, or Mary and, and Joseph went back to where they left him. Where did they leave him? At the Feast of Pentecost. Not at the Lutheran Church, not at the Methodist Church, not at the Foundation in England, not Calvin, Knox, Finney, them man were fine. We never left him at the beginning of our organizations. We left him at the Feast of Pentecost. That's where the church has got to come again. That's where you'll find him. Not in your church, not in your organization, not with your mother's religion, your daddy's religion. You'll find him at the Feast of Pentecost. I know you think I'm crazy. Maybe I act that way, but I feel different. Look, brother, back to Pentecost. We've all gone too far now. We've took Pentecost and organized it and organized it and organized it and organized it, made this denomination, spit hairs on this, that, and the other. Joining hands is all right. That ain't enough. Let's get back 
to the original. Get back to the beginning. Get back where we left it. Amen. Hear me. I speak in the name of the Lord. Back to the beginning. You say, I'm a Methodist. It wasn't so at the beginning. I was sprinkled. It wasn't so at the beginning. I'm a Baptist. It wasn't so at the beginning. I'm Presbyterian. It wasn't so at the beginning. At the beginning, it was Pentecost. Not an organization, but a Pentecostal experience that brought the seed of God down by the Holy Ghost. Made men and women speak in tongues and stagger like drunk men. Spirit operating in the church, showing signs and wonders. Wasn't so at the beginning. You said, well, I belong to the great holy church. That wasn't so at the beginning. I belong to the holy Romans. It wasn't so at the beginning. If it ever puts out another branch, it'll be a Pentecostal branch. It'll have the same fruit, same signs, same wonders that the first branch put forth. You say, I'm a Luther. It wasn't so at the beginning. You're grafted in and living on the name of the Lord Jesus when you're not bearing that fruit. The signs of the believers don't follow you. These signs shall follow them that believe. And they went forth preaching everywhere the Lord, working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. We got anything different from that? It wasn't so at the beginning. The way they got the Holy Ghost at the beginning, that's the way we get it today. You say, well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, got, I believe maybe, I, when I believed I received the Holy Ghost, it wasn't so at the beginning. They believed and then received the Holy Ghost. Paul said in Acts 19 to them, Baptists up there who had that converted lawyer for a preacher... Apollos, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? When you say you got it when you believe, then it wasn't so at the beginning. You say, I've been sprinkled, and I say, oh, it wasn't so at the beginning. I joined, uh, it wasn't so at the beginning. Never joined no church at all at the beginning. They were burned into the church at the beginning. And if that... That's right. You're burned into it. And if this vine ever puts forth another branch, it'll be a, like a branch. If the vine ever puts forth another branch, it'll be the same kind of branch that X was wrote on. It'll have the same doctrine. It'll have the same power. It'll show the same signs because that's kind of the church they had at the beginning. Let's stop hybriding ourselves. Let's go back to the Word like it was at the beginning. You like that? I live on that. Let's speak to him now that wrote that while we bow our heads. Is there any in here this morning that feels like it you've been crossed up somewhere? And you'd like for the Holy Spirit to come in this morning through a birth. You know, high breeding was such a horrible thing in the Old Testament. He said, a bastard child shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord for ten generations. There's nothing to breed him out. Only that's sin. Think, ten generations, 400 years before an illegitimate child could ever come into the kingdom of God. There was no serum to take care of him. He had just breathed out through the family. 400 years before an illegitimate child could come into the congregation of the Lord. But today, since the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed, You've been interbred by all different kinds of ideas. The Holy Spirit's here this morning to breed you back to the original. Bring you back to Pentecost. Breed you back. And we step together this morning in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, letting the Holy Spirit... ...cising work. What is circumcising? Cutting off all the hybrid, the surplus, the things of the world, the things of the church age. Bring us back to Pentecost. Like it was at the beginning. Would you love to receive this experience and would desire a prayer that you would receive it and go back to the beginning and have the very life of Christ living in you producing the signs that he did when he was here on earth. Would you raise your hands for prayer just before we pray? God bless you. God bless you. Just hands everywhere. Gracious Lord, we thank thee this morning for thy word. It is sharp. It is true. But it is a a sword and a corrected sword is sharpened and it's powerful it's a discerner of the thoughts of the intents of the heart 
We thank thee this morning for thy word, though it cuts its circumcises. That's the reason that it is a sword. It's to circumcise us from all the things of the world and to bring us into fellowship with thee as sons and daughters of God sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God ordained it before the foundation of the world that we might be holy and without blame before him, living in holiness in the realms of purity, professing that we are pilgrims on this earth, we're strangers. We do not belong here. Our inheritance is of above. We're looking for that city to come whose builder and maker is God. We hear from it daily and hourly while the blessings of the Holy Spirit showers upon us while we're sitting together teaching and praising Thee. We pray now for these hands that was raised up. God, this is the hour of sincerity. It's the hour when man looking upon the earth and fear upon them for the things that's coming. They don't want just something that's a fly by night. They want something solid. They want something that's real. And Father, when they see their life that they've been grafted in, they're not bearing the fruits. The signs of the first vine isn't in them. They've raised their hands. Lord, take away this and let me come through the true branch. God, I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will breathe them back. Breathe them back from all their doubts that Jesus heals. The doubts that the Holy Ghost is just a fanaticism worked up, and they, as people say it is, and let all doubts go away and know it's the blessed Lord Jesus in our presence. He's proving himself. And open the eyes of the people. Don't let them live like they did in the days of, of the apostles, in the days of the prophets. No prophet was hardly known by anyone until after his death. Jesus wasn't known. Many of the saints beyond that was never known. The message goes by and they miss it. This church will be raptured one of these days and taken away and then they'll scream, give me of the oil. But there's no more to buy then. May they not miss it this morning, Lord, but in humility, may they seek thee with all their heart. A Father, I cannot bring you to them or them to you. I can only speak what you said in the plan that you said. He that will hear my words and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life. I pray, God, that every person in here without the Holy Spirit may go back to the beginning this morning. Not don't have to leave their church. Just go back to the beginning and get grafted, or not grafted, but born into. A grafted vine is by denomination will never stand. I pray that they'll be born into the Spirit, into the vine, like it was at the beginning. I command them to thee, Father. I pray that you'll bless them through this day. Help us. Sanctify our thoughts and hearts. And tonight when the prayer meeting goes on for the sick, may there be power unspeakable in our midst. May there be hearts that's purified by the Holy Ghost. All doubts and frustrations gone. Jesus Christ lives and he's with us now. Grant it, Lord. Bless this church. Bless Brother Jack, Sister Moore, and, and Anna Jean, and Don, and all that's associated here. Brother Lyle, Brother Brown, and so many of them, Father, I couldn't name him. Every minister, Brother Kids and all the other ministers here, Brother Bootlayer, and the many that, that even we don't know. Lord, set our souls afire. God, let us go back quickly. We're talking about it, but talk won't work. Let's go back. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it's sin. It's unbelief. Sin is unbelief. We don't believe it if we say it and don't go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Pick up the message, Lord, and pour it out to the people. See the Holy Spirit operate again like he did on the day of Pentecost. Hear my prayer for them, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you and your pastor.